Hey everybody, it's me, Rocket, from Rocket Vlogs. I shot this video when we were still in Kansas City before Airfest and just never got around to actually editing it and putting it together, but I do think it's a great video for uh, people that are looking to get into flying electronics. So I edit it now and I'm going to put it out now and I apologize in advance for the intro, but I thought it was funny enough to leave in. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Rocket Vlogs! <laughs> Should I just actually put that in? Yeah. No, I can't do, do it. it. Everyone's gonna be like, I'm not watching this. Yeah, no, they're gonna be like, I'm <laughs> What? What's up? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Now, The Punisher, I have covered how I set up my ejection charges and what dual deploy is, but I have yet to actually show you just how to build a super cheap and dirty electronics bay. If you're getting into rocketry and you look at people's electronics bays, you might be woefully intimidated. And I like to follow the KISS approach, as is very popular in rocketry. Keep it simple, stupid. And uh, if you want to go all crazy and build yourself an insane electronics bay with magnet switches or screw switches or whatever, you do you. But that is not me. So today I'm going to show you how to build a really, really cheap electronics bay, except for the electronics. And... Uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it. Okay, so here's the basis of the world's cheapest electronics bay. This is just 16th inch plywood and a popsicle stick. This is probably like a dollar worth of material or you can do what I did and steal it from your friends. <laughs> so I go back and forth on whether or not I'm going to use one of these, but I am going to use it this time. I just sometimes like to glue a popsicle stick at the bottom of the sled and that's going to be my, my battery bumper. Just a little of God's adhesive. Some Bob Smith CA. Step one, complete. These are just igniter tubes from Aerotech Motors and they fit right over quarter 20 all thread. Hmm, unless there's something in there. Hey, there might be an igniter in there. Okay, so these are, <laughs> see, I was telling the truth. They're igniter tubes from Aerotech. Is there one in this too? No. Cool. So what you're gonna wanna do is get those lined up so that they're, you know, equidistant. So you hear that science word? Equidistant? Yeah. And then we're just going to take a little bit more of God's adhesive. Get this guy tacked in place. Thanks for all the free stuff, Taylor. No problem. <laughs> Rocket storage, electronic fake parts. <laughs> it's so cool. I just come here and I don't have to buy anything. <laughs> Trying to get this relatively close to lined up. There we go, the workings of the cheapest sled you could almost possibly build. I bet somebody out there has like a way cheaper, even hackier version, and I want to see it. I mean, 3D printed sleds cost technically less. Taylor, can I borrow some five minute epoxy? Oh my god! <laughs> Okay, I gotta be honest here, the addition of the West G5 is bringing the overall cost up a bit. But again, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> stop the table <laughs> nah, I'm having fun. Interesting, interesting. Boop, boop, boop. The world is my oyster. Yeah, these big YouTubers, dude. <laughs> Wait till Taylor sees the giant hole I cut in his table with the Dremel. <laughs> I wouldn't put that past you. <laughs> Just 
All right, now we're just going to drill some holes for these standoffs to go in. And keen eyed viewers will note I'm using two standoffs on the four hole strata logger. I promise you, it will be fine. I just wanted to put a nice hole in your table like I did with mine at LDRS. Dude, well, the rail button is on the sumo's right over the motor tube, and I just drilled straight through it. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I can't remember what I did that on, but I did that too. The Honest John? No. Oh, I think it was my 3-inch Punisher. <laughs> What's funny is, I just put the motor tension in, I was full of motor cases, and I was like, I should take these out. And then it just went straight through, I was like, oh, good call. There you go, there's phase one. This thing's really, really light. So now we're gonna put some batteries on it and some charges. Here's a fun tip if you're a fellow nine volt flyer, which is kind of frowned upon these days. Yeah. Unbelievable. But we buy these Duracell Procell bulk packs from Amazon. I can't remember how much it is, it's like 20 bucks for 12 of them or something yeah. like that. Someone was saying the Amazon basic ones are good. Oh yeah. Either way, these are way cheaper than going to the store, say like in Wisconsin and buying new batteries, even though these were in the box the whole time. It's that easy, folks. I still need to put a switch wire on for the strata logger, but yep. Actually, I'm gonna make sure the RRC2 still turns on before I put charges on it. Look at that. Okay, and I've showed this before, but I'll show you again how I make my ejection charges. Very simple. This is a gram and a half of black powder. Ram and a half of black powder into the tip of a cut off glove finger. E match goes in. Make sure all the black powder stays at the end. Twist it up. And tape it the same direction you're twisting it so it can't unwind. And then I, it's a little controversial I guess but I pull the tape all the way up and I keep it tight so that I kind of throttle it all into the end of the glove tip like that and then usually I keep going up the side so you get basically a little burst disc at the end and there you go there's an ejection charge and those go straight through my bulk plate directly to the altimeters. No complication here. No extra failure points. And then as far as arming the altimeters, I do exactly what you just saw me do. I just twist the wires together that are my switch wires. And that's it. I've flown well over mock with that. Taylor's done mock too, right? Mm -hmm. Was, tape. was your <laughs> was your minimum diameter twist and tape? Yeah, that was the Mach 2 one. Well, didn't the 4 inch uh -oh. on the M1832? Uh, I think it was like Mach 1.8. Anyway, quite fast, so... Nothing to worry about. <laughs> there you go, it doesn't have to be extremely complicated, you can just kind of... Slam some altimeters directly on a wood sled. Oh yeah, Taylor's building one too. Boom. And uh, wait, let me see that. Taylor's altimeter sleds all look like this with a single quarter inch in the middle so you can put them in any rocket. And that includes the 200 pound 12 inch Punisher we flew on O-Impulse. Same sled. The exact same one. <laughs> 
two straddleogers, a bunch of wires and tape. That's all it takes. Thanks for watching. <laughs>